Today on the Marvel Cinematic Universe Podcast, we are discussing Loki, Season 2, Episode 6, the finale, but the title is Glorious Purpose, which is the same title as the first episode of the first season, but that's neither here nor there. All that and more of this stuff we have some amount of maybe control over. Who knows anymore? Welcome to the Marvel Cinematic Universe Podcast. My name is Matthew Carroll. And I freaking called it. Sorry, I'm Jeff Randall. Oh, is that how we're going to start it? <laughs> <laughs> and I mashed the coffin. <laughs> I told you, I told you, Edge of Tomorrow was going to happen. Yeah. Nailed it. Is this, the, I don't know what Edge of, is it Tomorrow is the thing where he's the storyteller? It's just over and over and over and over again. Oh, oh, the movie yeah. Edge of Tomorrow. We said uh, Dormammu, you know. Yeah. All the references. Yep. Mm-hmm. Dormammu, I've come to the edge of tomorrow to bargain. <laughs> <laughs> again and again and again. I, lo- I loved it. Ugh. But like, full it's spoiler finale, alert, though. finale, like, oh. I'm assuming this is the finale of the show. Like, it's over. It I don't, really I don't felt think like it's a, coming back. Yeah, yeah, that was it. That felt like everything got tied up in a nice little tree. I mean, a bow. A nice little bow? <laughs> the Idrisil ending is just so freaking beautiful. Like, him doing everything he can to push against his family and his purpose that like in that family and wanting to his own, like, you know, his own throne, his own purpose. (laughs) But then like he does it and it's sort of like, he becomes a part of the mythology, you know, that is his family. You know, it just like, there's something really beautiful about Loki, like being the villain of the story and then leaving the timeline, going through centuries of like learning and progress and growth, and then ending up being the very like uh, the very story that is their world. Like it's just so good. Gosh. Yeah, it went very theatrical. They went all in on this mm-hmm. episode. <laughs> yeah, they God, they went all absolutely all in. I was like, how in the hell am I going to have enough emotions for this? After having watched the Marvels earlier today, and like very different vibes, <laughs> they were so different, but they so were still different. both like so epic and and so like I'm I'm pooped. I, I've got I'm I'm and don't I'm talk exhausted. About it. Don't bring it up. Don't mention it. We're young. We're spry. We're fine. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> we're fine. Going. This is fine. It's only what seven o'clock West Coast. <laughs> uh, it's eight oh nine. I'm never gonna get it right. Speaking of, we've, we're, we're we're covering Loki. We're actually we did these episodes inverted. We're going to drop this episode tonight, hopefully very soon, um, to talk about our reaction to Loki. But if you're looking for our Captain Marvel reaction, it will be up tomorrow. Uh, so check that out. Um, yeah, just letting y'all know that if you're looking for Captain Marvel, it'll be up soon. It's already recorded. We're going to do that soon. one. We just got to edit them when I can. So how about that pyramid reference? I know. There's so much to unpack. There's so much. How do we, so how do we go, go in order here? Yeah, there's so much episode. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't know. I, I think I think we go character by character, but really this episode is so Loki focused. Like we got a little tag of every character, like where they end up or whatever. But really, it's this episode is Loki. Um, yep. It's he really all kept about zooming him. in on those Tom Ford loafers. They looked very mm. comfortable. <laughs> I was they like, looks so comfortable. <laughs> as he was walking up the uh, the like the crags, the like rocky crags, I was like, those shoes don't look like they're good for no. off road. <laughs> the horns make sense, and then you have these cute little oh. loafers. Oh, oh, those horns! The, the horns, horns so that good. are made of that that like black and gold. Mm-hmm. Did it make oh. you guys feel sad? I also felt like sad. Very yeah, well, it, like. Okay. His, He's giving like, up oh. being with friends. He's destroying this life that he thought he had. Because you have to, it's okay to break something as long as everything else can survive or you can replace it with something better. Yeah. So, like, he has to break his his reality, basically. And then... He has to leave, leave behind his life. Yep. So that every, like, it's okay yeah. to break something as long as you're leaving hope for something else. And then he, he realizes what he can break is his own chance at happiness or a life or friends. He gets yep. solitude, but he gets, he gets to, that throne. Yeah. Well, he gets the throne and he gets, he takes on the burden. I got, I got to, I can't wait to rewatch because there's so much in there. There's that wonderful thing about uh, how. I make the hard choice. That's why I get the big chair. Oh, you got, for one second, Euro, I was like, you got to take Sylvie out. 
like that's where we're going with this, right? You're just gonna <laughs> just for like one second. Then I was like, no, 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 no. Yeah, I know, yeah it I was know. so dark, but yeah, I, I thought this it was possible for but sure. We were like, I was like, oh. If and she had like, given her blessing, die? he might. Oh my have, god! But her being like, no. When she was like, you're not gonna get my blessing. Like <laughs> that's what you're waiting for. No. Damn it. <laughs> And, I, and we we called a lot of uh, what happened with going back and seeing that, that moment uh, with mm-hmm. He Who Remains and talk, having that conversation again, Be and cool, in such a bunny. weird, cool way. Loved it. <laughs> he just couldn't get her to do it. And he also confirmed that he's time. The time slipping was all part of the paved road. Like all of this yeah. was part of the paved road. Yeah, oh, and I it. love. That's, hmm. I love the way that he stops time. It's like he just turns a key oh, in the like, air. Oh, and you didn't think that we didn't have this conversation already? Booyah. In your face. Oh. oh. <laughs> I'm using words like that so I don't curse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm uh, What's his name? Who is in Home Alone? Macaulay Culkin? No. the, the Joe the, Pesci? Yeah. He would say things like, crikey, because he's like, I curse all the time. And they keep oh, yeah. finding me. Oh, so funny. I just had to be like, Gaya, Gaba. <laughs> Man, I, I just There's love There's so it. much to unpack with this. And like, it's so funny that like, this Loki, or this, this iteration of Loki, whatever, whenever he was in Avengers, like he wanted the throne because he wanted people to look at him in adoration. He wanted that recognition. And now... He has sacrificed everything given of himself so that he can sit on a throne alone with no one knowing the great things that he's doing to, to maintain everything. Mm-hmm. Ugh. And this thing about Loki we've learned is like what he wants versus what he like will do now uh, to save, save the timeline. And like now that he has kind of come to this place of... I don't know, peace with himself and like actual goodness, I guess. I don't know. It's just really interesting because it really is like all of his like fighting as a villain seems like it was just attention seeking. You know, he just wanted yep. his family to care about him. He wanted them to love him. He wanted people to care about him. And then in, in this, he got that and he didn't need a throne anymore. He just needed that. He just needed people to care about him. And then to protect those people, he decided to give it all up and just be alone forever guiding the timelines man he <laughs> this is the show this is the worst show for like you know when you're watching a show and your family member watch walks in and sits down and you're like oh yeah they're trying to kill that guy and he doesn't know it or like, like there's some like short synopsis you can give and you can yeah. like whoa i'm watching like whatever nypd blue and like oh now i get it like that's the bad guy that's the good guy there you go yeah when he my partner walked in and sat down on the couch next to me as he's climbing the rocks and t- turning on time again and like <laughs> or d- lighting timelines up and i just like could, there's nothing i could say and like yeah <laughs> Like, just, this what's going is on absolutely here? Absolutely absurd. Uh, like, there's gold is forming to can, the chair. Yeah. Horns are coming out of his head. Like, what is happening? It's just, just, just enjoy it. Well, Kevin, Kevin was like, "This is taking a real weird turn." I was like, yep. "I can't just go with it." I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like the the tendrils of his cape mm-hmm. were were branches. Mm-hmm. Like that was so freaking cool. It was it really visually. Was. Very stunning. He looked like old man Loki for a second. Yeah. It just mm. got Glorious very distorted. Papas. I know. It was cool. Oh, God, it was, cool. it was so gorgeous. Yeah. I, I wasn't totally sold on it until it became Idrisil, and then I was just like, yep. Mm-hmm. That's perfect. Yep. Oh, my gosh. That's perfect. Yep. tree. <laughs> I loved, though, that like they didn't shy away from the spaghettification of Victor Timely over and over and over again. Yeah, then it just became like pretty. It wasn't yeah. even horrific it was anymore. Like they they they, <laughs> they were like, know. how can we stylistically do it a little bit different every time? There was one of them where you really got his skull was like you saw his skull. Yeah, where you saw his skull like, there at the bottom of the screen. It's so good. We said it had to be Loki. And we it, did. it took a very long time, centuries, to get there. Yep. Yep. I, I really expected it to just be like Victor does it fifteen times and he goes in. I did not expect him to spend centuries trying to get it right. That was yeah. really interesting. And that in itself was its own form of like sacrifice. The idea that he spent centuries learning this stuff and going over it and now that he had all the time in the world. 
Mm. Yeah. That's Ugh. what you do with too much time. You learn, was it quantum physics? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that Obi knows about engineering and physics and science and really all of it. Mm-hmm. Mathematics. <laughs> I just loved all the different iterations and how, like, all of the struggles of the entire season, like, fell away, and it's just about him accomplishing this goal. My favorite part was when he runs and he's like, Miss Minutes, I know you're hurt, I know yeah. you're angry, but we need your help to build the loom faster. She's like, huh? It's like, what? <laughs> that was awesome. So good. I know you're hurt. Oh, man. And oh, then, my- like, the, the fact that Mobius was able to to pick out that, like, when he's like, all right, a little faster this time. Movie's like, yeah. this time? What do you mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What do you mean this time? Here. Him and Sylvie were on it. Yeah. yeah, well, they were on it, but only just each time they got a little clue, and then they had to reset again. They never really got more yep. into it. Oh, it's so many times. It's just the, the Marvel, like, patter that is in so many things. This show does it so well. Like, the trying to keep things light while dealing with really heavy things. So... He's doing all this stuff, but he still like worked in that dig when he's like trying to explain everything. And he's he picks up the little model and he says, I know it looks like Mobius, but it's Victor Timely. <laughs> he <Yeah>. puts it down. <laughs> Lucky you, Mobius, it's Victor. <laughs> oh, and he like runs over and like Obi made this model. It's not done, it's got one coat of paint on it. It looks perfect. <laughs> So the two good. things they nailed this season were all of the intros and the comedy. Yep. I mm-hmm. felt like every intro for every episode was amazing. What do you mean by the intro? Like the like the intro before the actual Loki mm. thing comes up. Like today, it like went in and yeah, it went backwards through the mo- yeah, it went like a backwards. It was super cool. Yeah, mm. cool. and when they went back in time, they had like the do 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 nineteen hundreds intro. <laughs> You know. Oh yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. They did. A, they put a lot of thought into it, and the music For in this sure. one, like when Loki and uh, He Who Remains were talking, they went into like the beep boo beep boo Loki theme while yep. they were discussing something very important, and I couldn't concentrate on what they were saying because I was like, "Oh, there's a theme. It sounds really cool." It's like, "Oh no, <laughs> I bet they said something really important." <laughs> <laughs> he said something so important. I know. I'll have to kill you. I get it. <laughs> but no, that was that was during the fight with Sylvie, not the conversation. We were asking to see him so much, the he who remains from the end of Loki season one, and I, I feel like it didn't disappoint. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For yeah, sure. Yeah, really. Like, and not only did we get that conversational, you know, uh, like almost impish guy, but like he got to be expanded upon and then make commentary on other versions of him. <laughs> Oh, he made fun of Victor Timely? Yeah, when he was like, how's Victor <laughs> Timely? <laughs> I was like, damn. Was like, oh, oh, shit. <laughs> okay. You know what's... We, we keep talking about what they could do with Kang and, like, how they could fix with their, you know, their plans and stuff. But, like, I honestly feel like they could never... Like, obviously, they couldn't have the Kang dynasty or whatever. But, like, the way that this ended... They could go. They could just like completely change course. You know what I mean? Like they like yes. he, he destroyed the loom. The TVA is talking about how they're going to control Kang in the oh future my God, and you're stuff. So right. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, what if they're Kang like, Dynasty do they... doesn't end up being the next? Right. Exactly. They could absolutely just rename it. And like we think they've pointed their shot at Kang Dynasty, which they did. And then they're just like, you know what, Young Avengers, and they could just completely change course, rewrite it. They're just doing a different thing. Which Young Avengers could introduce. Iron Lad, and then we get a different actor as Kang, and like they maybe they could bring back the Kang thing, but like do a different thing because they, they they like the they said his variants are starting to pop up, but uh, we're keep, we're you. keeping them under control, but he doesn't know we exist yet, right? And he's like, that's right. Yeah. Who's the six one six one that or the that, was the that was the quantum mania? Okay, that's, yeah. that's, that it was, was six one six adjacent. Adjacent. Yep. I was like, yeah. oh shit, is that Ant Man? Okay, that's so funny. Six one six adjacent realm is what he said. Okay. Yep. So that's the quantum realm adjacent yeah. to six one six. So I was like, fun. what did he say? <laughs> What's that? I heard it. <laughs> did I, I hear six one six? Did I hear continuity? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Connectivity. Mm-hmm. See now Loki, now this Loki is connected to everything. Right. 
Yeah. So at the end of Secret Wars, when they need to like fix the timelines or like weave the branches together or whatever, oh, you're gonna shit. have to go to him. Thor has to go to the center of Idrisil and like do whatever he has to do there to like fix the timelines or save the t- save the multiverse. Thor will find his brother sitting there, and what would be on beautiful on the throne, exactly on the throne, it- not just on the throne, but like holding all of them together. Yeah, and be like, don't talk to me too fast. I have to take yeah, one like, word in at a time. I'm busy. I am very <laughs> stressed. Well, and what's beautiful about it is it, you know how we get to. We jump to the future uh, in 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 game. They go to see. Uh, they go to get the soul stone, and they see that uh, that's where that villain ended up. Red Skull ended up, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It would be a very similar moment. So to anyone who didn't watch Loki, it'd be like a version of Loki ended up here, and like that's fine. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like people who didn't watch the show would be like, "This is kind of a weird and beautiful moment for the brothers to mm-hmm. see each other again," but like. Won't they won't get the context, but we'll it, it like it's just really beautiful. Like I love that this set piece exists of just yep. Loki that we all know and love sitting there holding the multiverse together. God, it's pretty. <laughs> that's <laughs> glorious purpose. Well, and the glorious purpose thing, that's the thing I really want to like go back and rewatch and listen more closely to because that whole conversation between him and Mobius about what is glorious purpose and what is purpose, he says, most purpose is more burden than glory. And he oh. says, like, but you can't avoid it just to avoid the burden. Like, he's, he's, mm-hmm. so he's, and then, but then he talks about like someone murdering a child to save. Five, the five thousand. Basically, it's the it's the murder baby Thanos yeah. argument again, and like, I don't know. It's interesting because like they say, who who did that? Who's who's the person who did that? He's like, oh, it's my old partner Renslayer. Yeah. yeah, of course it was. Right, she became a judge, but and that's she's the one that's responsible for you being here and all this stuff. But it's like, what that that sort of that conversation seems to have inspired him to be like, yep. Purpose is burden, and this is my burden, and I'm going to take it on. Mm. But it also seems to be like he's not going to sacrifice someone else. He's not going to be the person who's willing to sacrifice someone else to save the 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 people. He's going to save him. He's going to sacrifice himself. Yeah. So it's, it's just like a, I know what kind of god I want to be for all of you. Yeah. And then he walks through the door. Like, so I'm just, I'm still piecing it together. Like, what did all these, because all these conversations he has with Mobius and with Sylvie, they lead him to this decision. And I, and I need to go back and rewatch, like, what are they saying to him that really guides him there? And I know that's, I know I've got a sort of an outline of it, but I want, I want more detail. I can't wa- wait to watch it as a whole. Yeah. Same. Now that oh, it's yeah. all over and just power through. <sighs> <laughs> TVA poster. As soon as you saw the Idrisil, it cut to the TVA poster of Idrisil, and it said, "We grow together." Yeah, <sighs> I love it. Love it so oh. much. Everybody's oh. still got a job. My heart. <laughs> Everybody's still. It's so a job. important nowadays. <laughs> job security. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Except for but Mobius. Then Mobius, Mobius he's retired. going home. But like, he's retiring. But where's he going to go? I was like, are you going to go? Oh, he's going to murder that other Mobius. That's he's what gonna I murder said. Himself. You're going to go drown that guy in your kiddie pool out back. Like you're going to kill him, right? <laughs> he's gonna. He's got to take himself out. And then replace himself. I think he's just gonna live a different life. Like he can't. I guess, as far as we know, he can't like become the Mobius on the timeline. He can just go have a life for himself. Yeah. And he he's just going there to see what his life would have been and see the see what this, his variant looks like on the timeline. Yep. I'm like, thanks, Sylvie. Now I feel great. I'm glad you're here with me to see the sadness on my face when you're just <laughs> like, okay, well, bye. And she just was like, see you yeah. around. <laughs> I'd be Deuces. like, can I go with you? No, okay. What about okay. Reno? I've heard it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I oh hear it's goodness. great this time of year. Yeah, <laughs> totally. So, how about Renslayer? Like, I guess ended up at the end of time mm-hmm. in the the void or whatever. And the light. And like we we saw the like the flashing like reflected on her face of Eliath, but we didn't see her die. If anyone could like tame it, it would be her. <laughs> like well, you're my friend, you're my familiar. <laughs> yeah, she comes back to the TVA riding Elias. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thought you said it last to me. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
<laughs> yep. Uh, but when she looked over, like to her right, there was the the pyramids. Right. And like my first thought was Ramatut. Oh, mm. and it's like every oh. king is kind of into me. Let's go see. Every king's kind of <laughs> into me. Well, there's yeah. all, and they also look down at her feet, and there's that manhole cover. Yeah, or whatever, and it said always on it. I'm assuming that might be from oh, the TVA. Yeah. So forever, yeah, it was a TVA. Always. Yep. But maybe if she opens that up, she can get down in there like they did. Maybe she gets. Maybe she gets into hiding before. Basically, they yep. left it open to whether she's dead or alive. Right. Which, so I, I think this is the end of Loki's story. We might get him in like Secret Wars. That's that he's like holding the timelines together. But this seems like his glorious purpose for real. Yeah. But what does that mean? That doesn't. That means the rest of these characters are still around. The rest yep. of the TVA is yeah. still around, still pruning. So, like, I really hope, still not necessarily pruning, but like, still making sure the timelines flow, guiding. Yeah, I guess. they're guiding. Keeping it all together. We grow together is all we really yeah. know. Instead of like showing up on the on the timeline to be like, no, you're doing it wrong. Kill everybody. They're just like, well, maybe maybe to the right. Maybe yeah. we'll just go to a little bit to the right just let them instead. Hang out and see how it goes. So I yeah. really wonder where we'll see them pop up next, and like, wow. will it be in a movie? Will we get a? Maybe they don't have another season of Loki, but they have a season of the TVA coming or something like you know we get Ooh, more of this. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe we just see these agents become like the shield. For this phase of the multiverse saga, you know, they're like popping in. Oh, you got a little problem here. We got to fix this. You know, you, know, you got yeah. an incursion oh, to you work need on. A little time travel. Yeah. Tempest. Oh, man. Problem solved. I knew they were going to do it. And I was okay <laughs> with it because I was expecting it hmm. just over and over and over again. I'm just, I'm thinking like the, like the monitoring of the Kangs. If they're sitting outside of time, if they're looking at the multiverse, then like, they see all of time. There should, like, if Kang is going to do something, he will have done it. Like, they should be, like, ah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to logic my way through, like, <laughs> being outside of time and seeing the whole thing. Yeah. Like, oh, here's where it happens because that's how it's going to happen. Time. But, like, mm -hmm. it doesn't, they're like, they're waiting for something to change. Well, the way we've seen it show up in this show is that there are, like set tendrils that seem to be like finished timelines, right? Mm -hmm. And then there are offshoots of those that are branches that are kind of can be new or different, or so like maybe they see these different versions popping up on new timelines that did, could eventually intersect with other timelines and do different things. That's the way they showed it f visually. So like I guess you could they can see oh a new branch is growing and on that branch this seems to be happening. We need to control for that or something. So are there no new branches happening now that he's holding on to them? Is like that it? No idea. Okay. <laughs> I would think there are still new branches, but I don't know. Ugh, a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work. It's a, it's a work. scaling problem. But like if he <laughs> needs somebody to like hang out with him. Yeah. I volunteer as tribute. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know? I'll sit at the end of time. Whatever. You, you know? Yeah. I'll just sit here and hang. You want to watch Netflix? Like, what do you want to do? <laughs> just <to> talk. <laughs> You're He's a thousand. Like, I'm you got stories to focus. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to talk. Oh, oh, I thought all his clothes were burning away, and then I was like, "No, no." Oh God, shadows. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I saw his clothes were burning off, I was like, "Ashley's gonna love whatever's coming up next." Yes. And yep. then it was, it was okay. It was jam jams and loafers, but he still looked good. <laughs> he looks so comfortable. Like if I'm oh, gonna yeah. sit at the end of time, it's jam jams and loafers. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> you know, and like if I have to wear the helmet, I'm gonna jam jam and loafer it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm Manifest pretty sure that right uh, that chair looked very uncomfortable. Like I would have conjured some sort of lazy boy, uh, like a so yeah, like a little recliner or something. You know, yeah. nobody's gonna see it. It's a throw <laughs> nobody's gonna see. Oh man. Uh, Minty Fresh twenty three in chat said, "Can I just say that moment when He Who Remains starts starts to say, how many times have you seen this, or you know whatever it was like? How many times have we had this conversation? It was like goosebumps and happy tears and all the emotions. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Feel it was good when so it jumped emotions. back like that. I I looked at Ken and go, oh, oh. We, oh. we're going to be very excited." I was like, we got, we said this was gonna happen, and after like the fourth time, he's like, hey, get it. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like, it just we definitely <laughs> nailed a lot of things, but did not 
call. We, we threw a wide smaller. net too. No. Yeah, always, always. Yeah, but <laughs> that's how we there, roll. There were some definitely things that like we felt really strongly about that happened, but other things that like you know we weren't really. Quick. <laughs> I did not at all envision this sort of just. We, we talked about him becoming. I, I did not think that, I heard Jeff talked about it maybe, and some of our uh, listeners wrote in about the storyteller version of Loki in the comics that like sits at the somehow yeah, the and, like, of stories whatever. Yeah. Like this felt like that sort of. It reminded me of like Sandman or something, like like stepping oh outside God. into yeah. its own his own realm. Yep. When I saw that open up and you see the citadel, the, the little rock that the citadel floats on or whatever. Through oh that yeah, tear, when he like opened behind the loom. Yeah, I was like, oh no, did the I thought that he remains was about to be like, good job, you did what I paved for you. You know, like the ro- literally yeah, like yeah. something was the little. Steps I thought they were appear. gonna kill him for a second. I got a little nervous for like. Five minutes that that was going to be the end of him. Yeah, I was like, are we going to kill Loki? Are we going to kill Loki? Is that, are they doing this right now? <laughs> are they like, doing this? You can't do this. I was like, I was like, oh, they're going to kill Sylvie, huh? That's crazy. <laughs> You're like, who are they? But gonna then I was kill? like, wait a minute, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This I can't handle. <laughs> Take Casey, not Loki. I mean. And I guess the happy story ending for Victor was just like no one puts the TVA book in his uh, room. He's oh, just I a guess so. Maker. Yeah, that was kind of weird. I felt like Victor's so lit up by all the science and stuff. It was kind of weird that that's his sort of like we like Victor at the end. So it's weird that that's his happy ending. He doesn't exist. <laughs> he doesn't exist like that. Yeah, yeah. that is weird. I didn't think about it. Mm-hmm. So I, I feel like there's a lot more story untold still. So I hope. Yeah, they, do, they tried I hope they do more. They did try to like tie it up, but there's yeah. a lot of questions. They tried to wrap up Loki's story, but yeah. everyone else is left kind of. There's there's more going on. I don't know. I guess everyone I didn't expect open. that. I guess I should have, but I thought that this would bleed more into what was to come instead of like such a. Okay, Loki's just here now. Yeah, but I just because I always want Loki to be involved. Maybe he especially will be. as a hero. Like get in there, yeah. and I wanted him and Thor to raise love and just be uncles. God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Now we've taken two steps back. (laughs) Mm -hmm, For sure. What if, oh no. So like when Thor does, because it has to happen, right? Look, Thor has to go to the center of Yggdrasil and find Loki there on the throne. so. It has to happen. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen then? Is Loki going to be like, he's been away from people for so long that he's he's become dissociative? Oh, you didn't Mm -hmm. watch Game of Thrones. I didn't. Or not you got after me. a bit. You guys are saying the same thing. <laughs> like, is he is he just gonna be just like I, I, I can't keeper. people anymore? I, I you know, I have to make the hard decision and you know, everything is uh everything is pragmatic and like no emotions. Well I don't think he's doing that. He's not making decisions, right? I, he made the decision to to go be the one on the throne and yeah, hold but it he all was together. Smiling. So that's yeah, like an emotion. But he did it. So, like, <laughs> he who remains says you have to be the one to make the hard decisions. Like, that's his whole thing. And mm-hmm. then Loki basically says, like, no, the hard decision is I'm sacrificing myself. And then I'm basically going to stand here and be a god and allow all timelines to continue to exist and thrive. Like, like I'm not going, I'm going to destroy the loom and that kills all the timeline. But he uses his, like, god powers, which are pretty extreme now with all of his power over time and yeah. space. And then he starts to like imbue those timelines back with life. Cause they're like, the branches are dying and he starts grabbing them and just like infusing them with life. And so now he's holding the entire of Idrisil together, like imbuing it with life. Like that's his, he's giving his life oh, for no. Idrisil. Basically it's really pretty. Ice giants. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who knew? <laughs> Frost giant right there at the, at the center of Idrisil. Mm-hmm. So Odin would roll over in his grave. (laughs) (laughs) Well, my thought is like, if if Loki has become so uh, disconnected from like reality and other people, and you know, just kind of sitting there alone, having to hold everything together, um, what if Thor goes with his little girl with Mm -hmm. with love, and like she, like he sees her, like oh, this is your niece, like. There, there, like that connection with, like, oh my God, this, uh, uh, we have more family, uh, like, 
And then he, you know, puts emotions back in him, or like he, yeah. he and reconnects. If she's adopted, he would understand. Yeah, and he would absolutely understand. Like adopted, uh, I was adopted. Mm-hmm. What if Little Eternity shows up and he's staying there in his glorious purpose, taking on that great burden? Oh, and he just and- transfers it off to her, so we can have him back. Sold. <laughs> well, no, that, that's kind of what I'm thinking, but not yeah. not transferred off. She's a much more powerful being than either of them. That's what if she true. says like, "You can rest now," and she grabs the timeline and like imbues it all with life for a t- forever? You know what I mean? Yes, like she for eternity. She lets Do him it. rest. Yeah, she, he's, she's eternity, right? I love it. That would be so great. Yeah, she's like, I got this. Hmm. Why don't you come? Why don't you come have dinner, Uncle Loki? You've been here a minute. You look hungry. <laughs> you deserve a rest. Or, like, maybe he has to go back, but, like, she lets him have a break to spend time with his brother or whatever. Like, they get to, like, have a conversation and whatever. I don't oh, yeah. know. She's like, I can hold this for, like, an hour. <laughs> you get an hour. It's like the uh, the Davy Jones thing. Like, if, once every ten years, he can go on land. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if her name's Eternity. Like, I wonder if she does have, like, time type of powers or like the or view of time or view of like the multiverse like I wonder if that's part of her power set so that maybe she's useful in this multiverse saga in a way you know yeah I don't know and can Loki I guess Loki can always have that power now he can just go back and forth in time well he never really got to where he could control going anywhere he just got to where he could go in his timeline so that's true I don't know. It just depends on, and if he always needed to do what he did, he doesn't want to change that. Does that make sense? Like he's, <laughs> yeah. if he wanted to set the timeline free, now if he goes back and ch- changes it again, he might like undo the things, the the path that he finally took. His Groundhog Day was ended perfect and he wants yeah, to keep it that way. All, all the way back to Thor 1 and just like start over. <laughs> <laughs> and then we could just do all the movies again with just a different villain. <laughs> yeah. Ashley just wants wants to wants Tom Hiddleston back <laughs> for them all everything. Back. Yeah. <laughs> well, this was amazing. This is a, an amazing last uh, thing for him and for um, Owen Wilson was awesome in it. Sylvie was awesome. B fifteen, like the entire cast was freaking killer. Yeah, it was um, funny. Yeah, it was funny. It was meaningful. Heartfelt. Yeah, it was awesome. I'm really really happy. I love found family stuff. I know it. <laughs> found family makes so much more sense. <laughs> it's the ones you choose. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I think that probably wraps us for uh for this reaction cast. But we're gonna be back. Um, like I said, tomorrow we'll have a Captain Marvel uh episode, reaction dropping uh, sometime in the afternoon, and uh we'll have on Monday we'll be recording our feedback cast for probably both of those things. So yeah, write in your feedback. Stuffing. We're going to have a lot to talk about next week. Um, oh, so MCUcast at gmail.com. That's right. That's right. Uh, we will be back soon, guys. Peace. Until next time, true believers. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> hey, you just listened to the Marvel Cinematic Universe podcast from Stranded Panda. I really hope you liked it. Let me just say a big thank you to all of our supporters on patreon.com slash mcucast. You are the lifeblood of our little operation here. And a huge, huge thank you to our insanely generous Illuminati tier patrons, Walter Kreisky III, Lieutenant Bongo, and Jazz Viz. You guys are amazing. If you'd like to see our beautiful faces, you can catch a video version of many of our episodes at youtube.com slash strandedpanda. Love you 3000, my friends.